in this model I'll show you how to generate this um, solid okay so here we have to use boolean operations and patterns and transformation features okay so first of all uh, I'll open a new file and here I'll take sketch I'll select this plane and I'll click OK. So on this plane, I'll take a circle. Okay. And let us assume the dimension equal to 50. I'll come back to part design and apply pad and increase the first limit to 200. And if you want to increase it further, you can modify it later. So, but first of all, let us apply the padding depth equal to 200. Change the rendering mode to shading with edges. And here, we have to insert a new body. Okay, take another body. And in this body, again go to sketch. Select this plane. And click OK and here you can take a circle on the vertical axis and apply the dimension and increase this value to 45 okay now we are having a circle on the center plane come back to part design apply pad so this part will be generated in the second body because right now body 2 is active and part 2 is generated under body 2. Use mirror extend and apply a padding depth of 200. Click to view, click OK. Okay, now we got the first instance. After that you can select rectangular pattern and select this pad Okay, I want to instantiate this pad in a single direction. So I'm using rectangular pattern and the object to a pattern is pad2. After that we have to define the direction. So in this case I can select the center axis of the cylinder as the direction of instantiating. Now increase the number of instances. Say totally I need uh, 8 instances including the parent element and after that you can increase the spacing okay now if this is okay increase the spacing further now this is my required spacing click preview and click ok okay now we have to edit the pad one so double click on pad one and increase the first limit so you can hold this limit one and expand it. Click preview, click OK. Now we got the reference cylinder and the instances. Now if you observe the model, see we are having uh, variable padding depths and variable cross section. See here uh, at the start for the first instance we are having larger diameter and it is gradually reduced to smaller diameter cross section okay so we have to reduce the cross section and the padding depth but here all the instant in instances are recorded in a single operation that is rectangular pattern and if you want to apply variable padding depths and a variable uh, cross sections we have to edit them individually so first of all let us break this rectangular pattern using explode okay we can explode this rectangular pattern and if you click S we will get separate instances okay instead of getting all the instances in a single operation it will explode the rectangular pattern and it will generate separate features for separate in okay for every instance now here leave the first instance as constant now go to second instance and reduce the dimension to 40 okay. 
after that again edit sketch 4 I reduce it to 35 next again sketch 5 and reduce it to 30 okay. and next sketch 6 and reduce it to 25 next sketch 7 reduce it to 20 and sketch 8 and reduce it to 15 next sketch 9 and reduce it to 10 okay now we got a variable cross sections now we have to apply variable padding depths okay for that again uh, we have to edit the pad 3 it is the second instance double click on it and reduce the dimension but see it will not be modified on both the sides uh, while we click on this pad 3 for the first time so simply click cancel and again double click on the pad 3 now if you change the value it will be modified now I want to apply a padding depth of 180 okay and press enter next edit pad 4 and here I'll apply a padding depth see it will not be modified for the first time simply cancel it and again double click on it and apply reduce it now it is changing on both the sides now apply 160 okay. in the same manner next pad 5 double click on it try to reduce it click cancel pad 5 and apply value equal to 140 percent next add 6 double click on it try to reduce it click cancel again pad 6 reduce it and what is this value this value is equal to 120 okay next add 7 click cancel double click on it cancel and reduce the value to 100 next add 8 try to reduce it cancel it again double click on it and the value is equal to 80 next pad 9 double click on it reduce it cancel it double click on it and the value is equal to 60 okay. Now we got the instances with variable padding depths and variable cross sections. Now we have to apply a transformation feature that is rotate. Okay, we have to rotate the instances at equal angular spacings. For that, uh, we have to use transformation feature rotate. But here we are having all the pad features within a single body. So uh, we cannot apply rotate for individual features the rotate option will be applied for the entire body okay so we have to move these features into separate bodies further right click the feature and select insert in new body right click this feature insert in new body right click 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 insert in new body again right click insert in new body again right click insert in new body now we got all the instances in separate bodies 
Now if you apply a transformation for this feature, it will be applied for this body 3. Okay. And again you can apply another transformation for this feature and it will be applied up to this body 4. Okay. But uh, there is no need to change the uh, rotation of this first instance, that is the parent element. So keep it as constant. Now select body 4. Okay. Now double click on this pad 3 and okay, right click define in work object. Now here select transformation feature rotate. Okay, click S. Yes. And define the axis now the axis is see here you can select the vertical axis or you can directly select the Z axis in this case the center axis of the cylinder is the Z axis so you can directly select the Z axis and apply the angle angle equal to 15 degrees I'll apply 15 degrees click OK next see we applied angle for this instance now right click define this in work object and apply rotate right click z axis and increase the value to 30 click ok next expand it activate it using define in work object next rotate click s yes. Z axis and here 45 degrees click OK next activate this pad 6 click rotate right click Z axis and angle is 60 degrees ok after that expand this body 8 activate this pad 7 and apply transformation feature rotate click S yes. select the axis and apply angle equal to 75 degrees click OK next activate this pad 8 apply rotate click S yes. and Z axis and the angle is 90 degrees ok and the last instance right click define and work object rotate click S yes, define the axis and the angle is 105 degrees Okay. After that, uh, collapse this tree. Okay. And here we are having two bodies body 2 and default part body now we have to add this or we have to assemble this to this default part body for that we have to use the boolean operations go to insert boolean operation and select assemble now assemble body 2 to part body now if you click preview it will be added after pad 1 under default part body click ok now we got the edges so in the previous case we didn't have these edges okay now these two solids these two bodies are combined now we will have body 2 under the default part body okay now this is the example now go to tools select hide all sketches tools hide all planes okay after that change the rendering mode to shading and see here is my solid okay uh, this is the end